right, let me close. Welcome everyone to Six Figure Souls, doing good and making money, the weekly podcast where I highlight entrepreneurs who have left the grind and designed businesses in alignment with who they are. This is a very special season nine where I'm interviewing my co-authors of the third collaborative book in the Ultimate Guide series, Leaving Your Legacy. I am your host, Camille Miller, an internationally known business strategist and founder of the Natural Life Business Partnership and the Soul Professional Society, a global business incubator for logically brained, soul-led micro-entrepreneurs in service. Today, I have a very special guest in the studio. She is a prime time mind and body alchemist for women over 50, Diane Amelia Reed. Hi, hey, Diane. Camille. Thanks for joining hi, me. Hi. Oh, it is my great pleasure. Now, Diane is writing a chapter, and her chapter title is From Status Quo to Surf Life in Mexico how to change your inner dialogue and live your dreams. I absolutely love that. <laughs> <laughs> so love your title, both the title of your chapter and your personal title. So can you tell us a little bit about what you do in the world and the gifts that you share with all of us? Well, as you and I were just laughing, my my title is newly created, and, and I love the word alchemist in it because that's that's what I feel like. I have so many tools in my toolbox that it, it's been hard to say, well, I'm a this or I'm a that, mm. but I am kind of a mad scientist in terms of picking the right combination of tools to help women, particularly women 50 plus, really just live their best and most vital lives. And my mission in life is to make the world a more loving and interconnected place. And my path for doing that is to help women love themselves first mm -hmm. so that they can do all that they do in such beautiful ways without depleting themselves. I love that. So, so there's, there's physical fitness, there's mind tweaks, and all, all kinds of things. So a little bit of alchemy. I love that. So tell me a little bit, um, well, there's so much to ask. So first, how long have you been doing this? I've, in this form for, for coming up on six years, mm -hmm. I started the year I turned 60 and now I'm 66 and I've been at it ever since. I love it. I love it. And you do everything remotely. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Everything's online. Because you have recently moved to Mexico. And can I ask you a little bit about that move and what motivated you to just pick up your life and move out of country? Well, I, I won't give you the full backstory because that's part of my book chapter. Yeah. But um, I've been to Mexico multiple times, different parts of Mexico, and always really loved it. Um, I... I learned how to surf. Uh, no, let me correct that. I, I, I tried surfing for the first time when I was 58. I'm still not good at it, but I love it. And so moving to Mexico where the water is warm versus being in Boston where the water is cold was a huge factor. Yeah. My, the year I started my business, my vision was to, um, have a business that earned income was digital or, you know, virtual. So I could work from anywhere. <clears throat> and I wanted to be near surfable waves by the time I was 65. And by using some of the, the hacks that I share in the book and that I use from my toolbox, the year I turned 65, it was like, well, let's do it. Oh my gosh. That is a hell of a manifestation. Yeah. I, I, I still shake my head. I still so, shake my head. I'm curious. One, to think up that manifestation is something. Right? That, that is, talk about goals. <laughs> that is a goal. And then when you decide to pack up and move your life to this other country, did everyone think that you were crazy? Did they, were they like, what are you doing? Yeah, an interesting combination. Um, some people were like, I want to be you. 
Others were, I could never do that. And I was like, well, you know what? I used to be you. I used to think I could never do this, Yeah. but here I am doing it. And then there were others like, oh my God, you're going to Mexico. Please be careful. And, you know, in the 14 months that we have been here, I can say with my, you know, my scouts on or hand up, I have not experienced a minute of discomfort the whole time here. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And it's funny, people here are like, oh, I don't blame you for leaving the States. You can't go anywhere. You can't go to church. You can't go to the grocery store. You can't go to school. You know, so we're looking across the fence at each other with assumptions. But really, when you're boots on the ground, life here is pretty awesome. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And before we turned on the cameras, I talked about I have heard of more people moving to Mexico than ever before, like from all different places in, in our country just picking up moving kids are in these schools and it's and and everyone's happy so yeah. that's amazing so with that are those the type of clients you also attract cuz we attract who we are oh that's so interesting um i haven't really thought about it through that lens but i i guess the, the best answer would be yes, in that they have a little 1% of hope, mm. 1% of belief, you know, and it's not, you know, people just charging in on, on big white horses saying, I'm going to change, you know, it's people who are like, I'm scared. I I've tried before. I, and yet, and yet. I know there's something, I, I, there's something more for me. There's something I can do with my body. Oh, oh, oh. If I can just tell a, a tiny little story, there's a yeah. woman who, online health and wellness platform for women and this wonderful virtual community and a woman who is, I don't know, coming up on her fourth year with me when she started, she was the, the kid who never got picked on the playground for sports mm-hmm. or, you know, was like the last yeah. one picked yeah. on like, the eye roll okay we've got to tape her and had beliefs about the limits of her body and literally today she just posted the completion of yet another program she's like I love cardio and it's like do I know you and (laughs) it's just you know and she's in her fifth she's in her mid-50s and has changed so much not just her body but her belief about what she can do, because once you, you know, once you're brushing your teeth and you see that little bicep muscle pop, it's like, well, what else can I do? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. that. And it's wonderful. So part of your toolbox, just so people can understand you better is the health, the mindset, the body, probably eating like it's, it's all of it. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. It's, it's all of it. And the new, the healthy eating part um, is particularly important to me. I grew up in a family that um, healthy eating was valued. Like there were veggies on the, on the, on the plate all the time. Um, but both of my parents were overeaters and um, emotional eaters. And I, I took all that in and Ultimately, I had an eating disorder. I was active in bulimia for 16 years. Mm -hmm. So in the course of unpacking all that, I learned a lot. And I have found a a healthy eating pathway that I follow that's got no deprivation. And it has allowed me a completely uncomplicated relationship with food without deprivation. So it it works for me. And I love sharing it with other people. Wow. That sounds like an amazing combination but I also do believe that you need all of it it oh, all yeah. has to work yeah, yeah, yeah you can't be strict in one area and deprive in another area and it's all of it your mindset yeah you could do that, that short term in your body but... yeah I love it's it it's not a way to live yeah so let's hop into the book a little bit um what made you want to become an author or join this, join this book collaborative because you have not authored before. I have not. Um, so one of the growing edges for me is learning to 
and this is going to sound so goofy, but to live my life guided by joy. Mm. And, and that can be hard in business because, you know, there are things you have to do, even, you know, when you don't want to do them. But when the opportunity to participate in this book came along, every cell in my body went, yes, let's do it. <laughs> and, and so that it was so clear to me. And like you rightly say, I have never participated in a book before, certainly not written my own. And so it was scary. It's like, uh, you know, who wants to hear my story? Uh, nobody wants to hear my story. I'm not going to write it well anyway. It's going to be boring. You know, people, blah, 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 blah. You know, all the stuff, all the head chatter. Um, but I knew how happy it made me when I was first invited. So I never gave up that, that joy. And this project was so great because there was so much guidance available and it was a, a team effort even to just get my chapter done. So it's been, it, the joy has, you know, boom, done. It's, I hit that, that ding when I submitted my chapter. It was like, I did it. I did I'm it. I'm hearing this. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 I love the telling of my story and I, I will straight up, you know, we were it was suggested that we have other people read our chapter before submitting it. And I happen to have friends who are authors. So I gave it to three of them and they shot holes in it and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So it was a ultimately wow. felt like a collaborative effort, which I also love. I love working collaboratively, which this is on, on big and small ways. So yeah, it was, it was fun. And I also like the way it's set up with my story and then the lessons that the reader can take away from it, because those lessons straight up are two of the things that got me from, as the title says, from status quo to surf life in Mexico. And one of them is learning how to get out of your comfort zone and how to practice taking little tiny risks so mm. that you can you can be prepared for when the big one the important one comes you're not so risk averse that it's like well i've got practice taking these little risks i can take this big one and the other one has to do with reframing your language and how you you talk and one of the things that i do mention in the book is something i hear a lot i have anxiety and okay that is your experience but maybe we could take it out of identity status, I have anxiety, which is, it's solid and prescriptive who, yeah. who I am to I have experienced anxiety, which puts it into a context of, yes, this is my life experience, but it, you know, I, I might not want to drag it along with me, you know, and just the subtlety of reframing how you speak about yourself and your experiences is incredibly powerful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What a good lesson. I love that. Yeah. I always say uh, with any of my clients or anybody that I'm around, you look for experiences or look for the evidence, right? When people say, oh, I can't do that. Well, let's look for some evidence because other people do it, right? Why not you? Or when I loved when you were saying, take little risks, it's like showing yourself evidence that you can do things that you thought you couldn't. Exactly. And it gets bigger and bigger. What a fabulous lesson. What a fabulous lesson. So I'm curious with the writing of your chapter, did you have any like aha moments of, oh my goodness, or some people get scared. Some people like, oh, I didn't know I had that in me. <laughs> Anything come up for you? Yeah. In the book, I talk about the whole package of our first year in Mexico. Okay. Um, it was not easy. I you know, I, I didn't just leap onto a silver cloud. I dragged my whole life with me, my attitudes and my belief <laughs> systems. And, you know, so I had to still deal with me in an absolutely new culture where I don't yet speak the language. And just adapting to the language, the climate, the um, life in Mexico, which is different. Yeah. By and large, you know, in, and I'm talking in huge right. sweeping statements here, but it's different. And adapting to that 
and not being shocked by other th the things that people hear are just like, oh, that's just life, you know, like, and it, you know, it depends if you're in a big city or a small town, but we were in a small surf community at first and I don't know, four, four times a week, we wouldn't have running water. It's like, huh, didn't anticipate that. And it was um, the very end of the dry season and it was pig hot and we had no air conditioning and wow. no running water. And you know, that was just navigating that. And, you know, it's funny because that first place, we, we moved four, t four times in five months. Oh. So life was really disrupted. Okay. Like, is that like just getting settled? Like just finding where you need to land? Yeah. Yeah. But it was, you know, it, there was no routine in that, you know, we, we try to do normal things, but it was always, well, we got to go look for another place to live and it ain't going to be here. <laughs> and, you know, so first town, second town, third town, and, and now we're good, but you know, it's just all of, all of that on top of navigating it again in a, in a new language and being completely unfamiliar with, you know, like when you're in a town that you've lived in for a while, you know, relativity, you yeah. know, like, well, yeah. this town is just a couple over and I know a few streets there and I've been there before to visit somebody, blah, blah. But we were just like in a completely new place. So the chapter talks about how great it is and you know we have no plans to return to the states we're very happy here we might at some point but we have no plans to now right. and yet you know we still have the challenges of daily life so it's it's ups and downs it's a roller coaster but you know bottom line i'm super glad to be here oh that's that is amazing now i can't wait to read your chapter so for the people that are listening, I don't read anyone's chapter until right before publication. Uh, I do it that way on purpose. So I kind of don't know the story when I'm interviewing you. <laughs> oh. And also because I don't want to judge anyone's chapters before it goes to publication. So I don't actually know. I do the final read through for edits and stuff because my name's on it, but. Yeah. <laughs> exciting now i'm excited to read your chapter i can't wait to pick it up so fun so fun um how could anyone get in touch with you if they'd like to learn more about you your story what's the best um, way to get in touch with you oh gosh um several ways so okay. you can just take my name and add at gmail.com and send me a note you can take my name and add .com and go to my website. You can go to LinkedIn, also under my own name. And there's a Calendly link if you want to just schedule a chat to learn more about what I do or see how I might be of help. That, that would be my great pleasure. I love that. We will also have all of your information in the show notes, but I always like people to hear it in case they're uh, not in a place where they can look up the show notes. Um, thank you so much for your time today and for telling oh. us a little bit about you and your chapter and your life. I'm really loving it. Camille, it's my great pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Well, thank you, our listeners, for joining us today. If you loved this interview, please share it with your friends and pick up our book, Leaving Your. it's called The Ultimate Guide to Leaving Your Legacy. It'll be out in September 2024. You can also join others by checking out the Soul Professional Society at soulprofessional.com. And a soul professional is someone who lives in a higher vibration, has an alternative approach to business and is here to help repair the world. If that sounds like you come over and join us and learn more. And don't forget to pick up our book in September, 2024. Have a great week, everyone. Bye, Diane. Bye, Camille.